So if we're going to study graph theory, we're going to need to have some common vocabulary. And in particular, it's going to be really handy for us to have a bunch of standard kinds of graphs that we can talk about by name so that every time uh, I want to give a simple example. I could just refer to a graph by its name and you'll know what graph I'm talking about and I won't necessarily have to write it all out. All right, so uh, simple example. Let's see. So uh, the most common of these, the most, um, I don't even know which one's most common, but a very common graph that you'll encounter is the so-called clique, also known as a complete graph. And uh, just so you know, it is pronounced clique. Don't say click, even though you might talk about a group of people who are all friends with each other as a click. Uh, when we talk about a graph theory, we're going to say clique. This is a graph that contains all possible edges, and that's the sense in which it's complete. Um, I guess I was doing the French pronunciation of this, right? The clique, and so I left off my E there and complet. Um, this graph, okay, let's draw a picture of one. Um, I'm going to give it a name first, so we'll usually just call it Kn, where n is the number of vertices. n is pretty much always going to be the number of vertices. If I want to refer to the number of edges, I'll use m. And it, this is a graph, so I have to tell you what the two parts are. Um, I'm going to say that the vertex set are uh, the numbers, n numbers, just from 0 to n minus 1. And the edges are all pairs, so this is going to be n choose 2. All right. So it's a pair. This is the vertex set. These are the vertices here, and these are the edges here. Um, and if you remember the definition of the edge set, we have to check that's really a graph. We would check that this is a subset of the vertex set choose two. Uh, in this case, it's the whole thing. So it's clearly a graph. And, um, and in pictures, for instance, here is a graph, which is K1. It's just one vertex, very simple. K2 would be two vertices and the one possible edge between them. K3 looks like this. It's a triangle. K4, you get the picture here. Um, you might want to draw this with a crossing, but it's kind of fun to be able to draw this without any crossings. There we go. There's K4. Um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, that is our complete graph on n vertices or the a clique Kn. We're going to see this one a lot. It's really handy. It has the one that goes along with it. I'll just put it right here. Uh, it goes along with it because in some sense it's the opposite of it. It's the graph that has no edges. This would be an independent set. Um, also, you might call it a... Uh, independent set. You might call it an empty graph. And I need a, I would like to have a label for this one. I'm going to actually use more than one letter here. I'm going to call it independent set sub n. Ind sub n is this. It's again, it's just uh, n vertices, but in this case, it's no edges. So just the empty set of edges. Uh, empty set is a subset of every set, so it's clearly a graph. And uh, um, it's just a bunch, we would draw it, we would just draw a bunch vertices and we draw n of them and no edges. Um, it is uh, the complement of Kn in the sense that all the edges, uh, right, they have the same vertex set and all the edges that are present in one are absent in the other. Uh, we'll talk more about graph complements at some point. All right, so that's a clique uh, and independent set. Another really handy one is a path. Okay, so the path graph is, um, again, hopefully these are familiar to you, but they kind of make sense, right? It's a graph where you sort of go vertex to vertex along the edges. We're going to give it a canonical name and a canonical vertex set. So I'd be like fixed. What is uh, the vertex set of the one true path? If I say PN, I'm referring to the graph whose vertex set is, oops, let me just write it like this. Again, uh, just, we'll just number the vertices, 0 to n minus 1. And the edges are going to be, well, it's, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. By uh, numbering them in order, I know it's just going to be i to i plus 1. Right, so let's see if I can write this carefully. It's going to be i to i plus 1 um, for all i in, well, n minus 1. 
right? So it's clear immediately that this is a set of n minus one edges, right? Because I'm I'm iterating over this set of size n minus one, and uh, each one, uh, this minus one gets me this effect where I only got up, right? This is uh, what is this p n? I only got up to four. I get the edge from four to five, but there's not one from five to six, which is good because there is no vertex six. Okay, real quick, it's easy to see. Um, then that the edge set, the number of edges in, in this is equal to n minus 1. And you probably knew that already, right? If you have n points and you want to start connecting them up in a path, uh, you only get n minus 1 edges. All right, so that's our path. The path is very close to, very similar to a cycle. Uh, they differ by just one edge. Um, but for a lot of properties, they behave very, very differently. Um, Cn, oh, I should be careful about this. You know, I wrote, uh, I wrote this as uh, Pn, as in it should be the path on n vertices. Um, the length of a path is the number of edges in it. And so if I talk about a path of length 1, I probably would want to call that P1. So really, I'm going to change this. Let's let's make this uh, PM, and this is going to be M plus one vertices and just M edges. So length of number of edges in PM is going to be M, and the number of oops, the number of vertices in PM is going to be M plus 1. All right, so uh, sorry for that. That's uh, it just There's going to be too many cases where we want to talk about the length of a path. And so if I'm going to name the path, I should say that it's the path of length of that length. So in particular, this means that like P0 is also just the empty graph, um, right? It's just one on one vertex. And P0 is also equal to K1. Um, it's just a path of length 0. Um, Cn, the cycle on the other hand, usually we do think about the cycle in terms of the number of vertices. It happens to be the case that the number of edges in a cycle is the same as the number of vertices. Um, but if we say Cn here, now we've got n vertices, and we're going to have basically the same edges that we had over here in the path, plus there's going to be one that wraps around. Um, hmm, how to write that easily? You can tell me if you think this is just a terrible thing to do. I'm going to write it as i plus 1 mod n. So that way, when I get to the last one, it'll wrap around to 0. right? And again, this is going to be for i in n. OK, vertex set, edge set. right? And this is clearly a set of size n. This is clearly a set of size n. Um, and uh, when I get to i equals n minus 1, it'll be n minus 1, vertex n minus 1 to i plus 1 mod n. So n minus 1 plus 1 is n, mod n is 0. So it wraps us back to 0, Okay, just like you would hope. OK, if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this would be our graph, c5. Very nice, right? There's the cycle. Uh, a couple others are kind of interesting. Uh, we may often find it useful to talk about the star graph. This is a graph that looks like this. It's just one hub in the center, and these other uh, vertices coming off the sides. Um, if I call this the star, we have to decide if we want to number it by the number of edges or the number of vertices. You see, again, it does have this, this property that uh, there's one more vertex than the edges. And uh, that turns out to be an important property. You'll see it's related to um, the presence or absence of cycles. Um, we'll get more into that as well. But for now, I look at this graph. Um, let's try to, again, use our um, let's, let's use M as our index here. So this is going to be the star with m spokes. And so I know 
it's going to have m plus 1 vertices. And the edges, um, let's put vert the last vertex right in the middle. right? So that's vertex m. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way up to m minus 1, and then there's m. And so the edges are going to look like m to i for i in m. Again, this is clearly a set of size m, right, because I'm iterating over m things, and every one is different, um, and each one is an edge from m out to i, and this, of course, goes from 0 to m minus 1. All right, so there's our star on uh, with m edges, or m spokes, m points, if you like, although they don't look so pointy. It's more like snowflake, especially when I draw S6 here. Um, these graphs, actually, uh, a couple of these graphs that we've seen so far, uh, the star, uh, the independent set, and the path are all of a very special type. So, so far I've been giving names to uh, particular graphs. Um, now I'm going to tell you about a whole class of graphs called bipartite graphs. Actually, let's see, the independent set, the star, there's a bunch of different classes of graphs that those all fit into. Um, the cycles of even length also fit into this class of bipartite graphs. This is a graph. Let's again, remember it's going to be, um, whoops, it's got a uh, vertex set and an edge set. And in the case of bipartite graphs, the vertex set is partitioned into two sets, right? This is a, another way of saying, actually, I could really write it as uh, the vertex set is uh, A, disjoint union with B. That means they're two disjoint sets, but their union takes up everything. So I've partitioned them into two sets. The edge set only contains edges, which uh, have one end in A and one end in B. Right there. So there's no edges that go from a, a vertex in A to another vertex in A. And there's nothing that goes from a vertex in B to another vertex in B. So another way to write that would be to just say that uh, this is a subset of A across B. Right? Every edge looks like it. It's something in A followed by something in B. Now, these are generally ordered sets, and we don't think of them as directed edges. Um, so you just take this Cartesian product and treat the result as unordered pairs. But that should be OK. You should be comfortable that because we're already writing them, these edges, in as parentheses, delimited pairs. All right, so vertex set, edge set, and a bipartite graph. In pictures, of course, this looks like this. I've got some vertices over here. I've got some vertices over here. And every edge goes across. Now, I drew this picture already, or some picture like this already with functions. Be very, very careful. This is not the same as a function because um, I could have... Uh, I could go across to two different neighbors on the other side. So one vertex in A can be adjacent to, in fact, it could be adjacent to every vertex in B. And there's a special uh, case of a bipartite graph, which will give us another named graph, and that is the complete bipartite graph. Okay, sorry, uh, I was recording with the phone and I got a phone call, I had to restart here. So we were doing complete bipartite graphs. And uh, we'll denote it KAB, right? So this is a graph. It's got A vertices in one part, B vertices in the other part, and uh, all possible edges that go from the first part to the second part. That, so it's got uh, A vertices on one side, B on the other. So it's, you could think of it as A um, plus B. And the edge set is, um, let's do it like this, it is um, i j plus a for i in a, j in b. Ooh, that's ugly. Oh, that's not so nice. Let me, uh, if, you, if in fact you had a and b, if you have two sets A and B such that 
such that uh, size of A is A and the size of B is B, right? You can write the complete bipartite graph on these two sets as A disjoint union B and A cross B. So it's a little cleaner that way. Um, the only reason I wrote it this way, and this is important, is that um, here I'm giving you an explicit set of vertices. Now, we're not going to use this so much as we go on um, because of the next topic we're going to see, which is about uh, telling whether two graphs are the same. And, you know, I can make a graph. Let's make a complete bipartite graph. Let's say it's A, B. Oh, I shouldn't use A and B, C, D again. Let's call it U, V, W, X, Y. And I can have another one over here, which is maybe with the labels I have, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I draw all the edges, um, in this case, let me just be real clear about this. We have, this was A and this was B, and we have all the edges. We got, just have all of them. I think there should be six, right? Do I have one, two, three, four, five, six? Good, six and six. Um, so these two graphs in some sense are the same. They look the same. They've got sort of the same structure. You can kind of see how there would be a correspondence between them. And we'll talk about these correspondences um, in depth. In fact, we're never going to get away from them. Uh, once we have them, every time we study any graph property, we're going to look for it um, up to these kind of correspondences. But until we do that, it's good to have an explicit particular one in mind when we, um, when we talk about the graphs.